Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit Featured Tournament Number Two. I'm Osmo, joined by Chucky. Chucky, we're almost halfway through the day. What have been your thoughts on how it's gone so far? I would say it's gone about as expected. I mean, obviously, very strong players in all of our matches, but I think lineup wise, we haven't really had any upsets. Uh, players with the more standard lineups, with more generally considered strong classes, have won. And I think Pavel had a really strong lineup against that Priest last match, as we saw. But there is no Priest to prey on this match for him, so we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, these two guys uh, both won their first matches, and they have very similar lineups. Uh, they're both running um, Hunter and Warrior, although Doug has the more aggressive Hunter, the face Hunter, and uh, Pavel has... Um, it's sort of a hybrid, because it does have more one-drops, like the Leopard Gnomes, but it's very uh, mid-range... Centric, and the one difference between these two guys' lineups is going to be the rogue and the handlock. Um, and that matchup has sort of evolved over time. Um, a lot of rogue players will say that rogue is actually favored, but pretty much everybody else uh, leans towards the hand handlock. What are your thoughts on that matchup? Yeah, those rogue players, man, they think they're favored in everything, but yeah, uh, yeah I think these. Who's favored in this match is really going to come down to what matchups we get. I think Rogue versus Handlock is one of those more uh, fringe case matchups where depending on the tech choices, uh, it can really go either way. But mm -hmm. Dog's Hunter lines up very well against Handlock and Pavel's slower Hunter, but it lines up a lot worse against the Patron Warrior. So depending yeah. on what matchup he gets, that can be a, a good thing or a liability. Rogue is really good against that slow Hunter, and it's really good against Patron, whereas, you know, it's not as great against uh, Handlock. And Dog's Patron Warrior is going to line up pretty well into Hunter, and obviously you're fine with a mirror match. So overall, I'd say Dog has probably gotten the best out of these matchups that could possibly happen, but it can still go the other way. Pavel can get perfect matchups or, you know, just above-average matchups and be favored. Yeah, and... Um, Pavel uh, is going to be taking a quick break, so um, we're going to have to talk to Chalky oh, man. for the next three oh, minutes. Here we go. All right. So, Chalky, I want to get your general thoughts on the meta right now. The meta. Well, what do you what do you think uh, of the meta right now? Is there any classes that you wish were stronger? Is there anything that you yeah. wish would, would change? Is there any tendencies that you wish players on ladder or in tournaments would go away from? Well, Enlighten us. Let us into the Chucky mind. Patron Warrior is considered really good, but I would say 90 plus percent of people that played on ladder have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> and it, it's, it's pretty much a non-factor on ladder. Like You can play any deck on ladder, uh, but Patron does really well if you're good with it. So, it's not the fact that, here's the thing, is I think Patron needs to be nerfed on a fundamental level. I don't, I don't like the deck, and I think it breaks two fundamental rules that Blizzard doesn't like, which are, it punishes you for playing your stuff, like, harder than normal. They not only clear your stuff, but they develop their own based on how much you played. See, Unleash the Hounds nerf in the past. And uh, other than that, it also breaks the other rule, which is it does too much damage from the hand that's uninteractable with. See Leroy nerf in the past. So it it would make sense if they were to nerf it, um, but I don't know. It has been quite a while since it's been out. Uh, and the thing is, I don't think it's like... Like, in my normal day of playing, it's not a huge deal on ladder because everybody is bad with it. So, like, yeah. people make that argument. Like, it's too skill-based uh that it doesn't need to be nerfed but then you look at players that keep getting rank one with it with ease because they're just playing it at a good level and they're just smashing everybody on ladder and it always it has such good matchups across the board that when you play it on ladder you do super well so that i feel when i'm laddering with the deck that's not patron i'm handicapping myself and that's a bad feeling to have you don't want players to feel like they're making a wrong choice because they want to like Play. You, you want to play what you like, but you also don't want to put yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, so, like, as a competitive player, for the past few months, at the end of the month, 
it feels like I need to play patron if I want to really get a high rank. So I don't like that much about the meta. But other than that, I mean, I think a lot of decks are viable. I think Shaman is the one that everybody's kind of like, oh, no. Shaman. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, Shaman's like the one that people kind of agree is pretty weak. And it feels, we, feels like every day I log in and on my computer and go to Reddit and there's another yeah. guy who's hit rank one with Shaman. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it does kind of come to light when people call something weak. There's always somebody there to play devil's advocate. Like, look, I did fine with it. But overall, it is definitively the weakest class. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I got I think, to rank one legend with a 52% win rate across... 8,000 games. But I played Shaman. Yeah. And it was in the first week of the season. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, going back to the matchups, uh, Dog got a pretty good one to start with. Traditionally, I mean, the, the slow hunter isn't fantastic against Rogue due to cards like Sap and the early pressure from Backstab and SI agent. But one of the cards I know that Rogue players hate to see is Eagle Hornbow. Because it can test so many of their plays. Yep. Um, and also, basically, they just have to have a really solid early curve to contest like anything. If you let the first couple uh, drops, like if there's a one drop or a two drop, uh, and it manages to connect without you having anything to do with it, like if you don't play anything until turn four, you pretty much already lost the game. Because at that stage, you've already taken so much damage that you have to use so much removal just to stop the bleeding. And then your win condition in this matchup is basically just to either the bro the hunter has to brick on all of their early stuff, or you have to race them and win, um, which both are very unlikely. Yep. So here's like where the eagle hornbow comes up huge. You just get to remove the rogue minion. You have a trap up. Things go really well. Uh, if it was a faster. Hunter, I could see him ignoring the 3-3, but generally the slower Hunter, you want to protect your trap. You don't really care as much about the face damage. Uh, yeah. And Dog is the faster Hunter. Uh, yeah. He, he is playing the very aggressive version. We saw an explosive trap even out of him. So. I think it was like double up and own, double infiltrator, working infiltrator. Yeah, now I don't know how much Dog knows about uh, about Pavel's deck. I think he, he's a little afraid of something like Snake Trap here. I really don't want to play into Houndmaster, especially going into that turn. Mm -hmm. So it would have felt bad. Uh, but, I mean, backstabbing would have given him a 1-1 to proc that freezing, which could have been nice for him. Yeah. Would have forced like a... A really inefficient weapon hit if you wanted to protect the freezing trap. Yeah, and if he doesn't hit this turn, I think that definitely shows that he's aware of the possibility of snake trap, and it's one of those things he really doesn't want to walk into. Mm -hmm. Well, Earth Ring Farce here ended up being pretty clutch because um, it allowed him to establish um, another thing on the board, heal himself back up, and it comboed for Eviscerate to be able to take out the um, the Leox. So I'd say Dog is in a pretty reasonable position considering this matchup. And yeah, this is exactly where you want to be. You have a one way. To... Oh, I yeah, I was mixing up the the hunters earlier on. I thought Dog was both players. Oh man, I was like Dog's the rogue and he's the hunter. So yeah, Pavel <laughs> has the slower hunter. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't call me out on that because I kept saying, "Yeah, I, dog has a fast hunter." You're like, "Yeah, dog does." Well, have a fast I, I, I hunter. thought you were just that talking we'll about in later. the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Pavel's slow hunter with freezing traps. So. All, right. all right, still not where you want to be though. Oh um, no, not at all. Either he, either way, he's in a really bad spot. He already had to toss away a kill command. He's probably going to pitch the second one here, and at that point, you really need to start drawing into like Doctor Boom next turn to get back into this game. Mm -hmm. And even it's, then, it's oh, that yeah. was actually really problematic for rogues because rogues. Yep. Um, there was a time when there was a bunch of hand locks where rogues were putting in a BGH in a three slot, um, but that time has passed by about a month or two. Um, so 
it's just mm-hmm. it's a super tough card for them to deal with because a lot of times they're like on an empty board they're fanning it taking the damage from the bombs and then having to like blow a bunch of removal into it like eviscerates and stuff so yeah dog would definitely take a lot of damage from a dr boom and yeah it'd be it'd be really tough to come back from but again pavel's hand is kind of just dead stuff i mean he has 11 damage if he just goes all face. 12 with the Creeper. Decides to hold on to the Kill Command and just develop the bow, which is... That's fine. So, but again, he really needs to pick up something like Savannah or Boom next turn. Well, Dog is sort of out of stuff, though. Uh, he's got Azure Drake. That Azure Drake is going to go a long way unless he gets Kill Commanded. Um, Pilot Shredder is good just because it's something to play on the board, but Dog really needs like a sprint or something to be able to uh, draw into more stuff to to try and race out uh, Pavel. Yeah, I mean Phantom Knives is pretty nice. Um, probably will get to clear off whatever comes out of this Shredder. Doesn't even need to pop the prep. Yep. And 17 is relatively healthy. I mean, you don't feel too threatened. Mm-hmm. Pavel can do 7 from hand, so 12 total. He can put himself on a quick shot or a kill command to win. Uh, that could be a potential play. Could just juggler and unleash. I mean, he could clear the board and develop a little bit. Yeah. And hope Dog doesn't have a way to clear it. But we know Dog's cards aren't that great. But, yeah. I mean, for Pavel, they could easily just be like another Flurry or another Fan or a Heal Bot. Yeah. And you, you're you never really going to get more than two Hounds after Violet Teacher is played in this matchup. It's rare that the Rogue has more than like two or three creatures on the board at any given time just because they have a limit, limited amount in the deck. Um, outside of, like, Violet Teacher or Violet Teacher tokens. Yep, but the Eviscerate top deck uh, will give Dog Lethal. He would have been one-off otherwise with that oil. All right. Well, Dog's got to be pretty happy about that one, uh, being able to go into... Well, I guess the Slower Hunter is a pretty... It's a lot better of a matchup than going yeah. up against a Face Hunter. Uh, but still, it's, it's uh, sort of a, a breath of fresh air to get the the rogue one out of the way because a lot of players sometimes struggle with finding a win with rogue and conquest well the more specifically the hunter deck of pavel is his weak link in this matchup it's weak to the aggro hunter of dog it's weak to patron warrior it's really what pavel is going to struggle to find a win with if anything so if he would have dropped game one to it you can't be feeling good at all about the series yeah yeah now dog's just going to throw up his uh face hunter against it and uh, we could very well be seeing a quick 2-0 for Dog. And a lot of players have been doing this, is bringing like two really strong fast decks and then throwing Patron Warrior on top of it and just taking uh-huh. two quick wins and giving themselves three opportunities to win with Patron. It feels like a lot of matches come down to to that. And Patron Warrior is just so good and uh, maybe not consistent, but it's I guess it is because it's... It's just so good um, yeah. that you're bound to get a win with it if you have three opportunities. Yeah, consistency is kind of one of those things that, as as a pro player, I basically see it as a deck's winning some percentage of the time. And regardless of if it's winning by a lot and losing by a lot, or if it's winning by a little and losing by a little, it's still winning that percentage of the time. So how consistent you are doesn't really matter. If yeah. it wins, it wins. So, yeah. you know, bringing those decks that win, that's what you got to do. And Dog is in a really nice spot. Basically, as the hunter, you want to go first, but if you go first and miss your one drop, you might as well have wanted to go second. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going to really favor Dog, especially with the way uh, Freezing Trap will line up. I'm I'm a little surprised he didn't trade. Uh, He's a little weak to Unleash now. But at the yeah. same time, Pavel kind of wants to hold on to it, but I don't think you can hold out for too long. I think you need to unleash this turn. Yeah. Juggler Unleash is one of like the best ways for Midrange Hunter to stabilize. Um, yeah. Unleash in general, I guess, but um, he does have both jugglers. Uh, he does have like 
a decent hand to be able to deal with face hunter because a lot sometimes mid range hunters if they get like two bad cards in their opening hand, then they they just lo lose from there because their hero power doesn't interact with the board. If they fall too far behind on the board, then they just lose out because they've taken too much damage already. Yeah, I mean, at this stage in the game, uh, it actually is really just a big fight for board control. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, face damage when you're both in the 20s is pretty overrated. You generally just want to take control of the board and dictate the pace of the game, and then you can kind of fall back on taunts uh, later in the game, hopefully. As the face hunter, you really can't do that, so you do need to play a little more aggressively, but... Dog definitely pushing for face damage, obviously, realizes he is the aggressor here. And he made a very aggressive play, didn't play around Unleash, like, at all. So, it, it can pay off. It didn't really pay off this game, but there's always a chance it does. Now, we do know Pavel plays both Freezing and Snake, so both considerations Dog needs to take into account. It's just going to attack to check and find out it is Freezing. Yeah. Now, what really sucks for Dog is that he drew both of his traps. What? Dog runs Snake Trap as well? Yes, Dog's running okay. the uh, Explosive and Snake Trap version. Okay. Yeah, and he picks up an Explosive, so this would be able to trade in. But, I mean, uh, Dog does not really have that great of a hand quality. It's actually poor, very poor, because he's got both... He's used both of his traps and... Um, well, he used Explosive, or got it from the Mad Scientist, and has Snake Trap in his hand, so Mad Scientist isn't going to pull anything unless he has a third trap. Yeah. Actually, Pavel's ahead on board and on damage. Yeah. It would have been really nice if he rolled a Huffer there, but... He does get the Snake down, so now it's a little... It's a little tough for Pavel to really ever get rid of that Leoc in a great way. Has Have we seen anything other than Leoc today? Oh, we saw one Misha. That's right. Yep. We saw a Misha earlier. Never Huffer. Never Huffer. Uh, Never I know Huffer. that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, yeah, now Pavel's in a weird spot. It, it's not too bad because... You know one of the cards in Dog's Hand is just a five-mana Leoc. Yeah. Which isn't too threatening. And you're Man. still ahead. And with a bow, I mean, that's ten damage across two turns with the hero power, so... You just need to find a way to sneak in six more damage over the next, like, two turns, three yeah, turns. Yeah, which and... is, it's really doable with, like, uh, Abusive Sergeant. If you pick up any sort of burn, you're basically, now you're setting yourself up. Yeah. So he can do uh, eight damage the following turn and just need to pick up an extra three uh, for the next turn. Not even. So he's going to be... In a pretty good spot, and I don't know what Dog can do, because right now he's basically at a point where he can't race. <laughs> yeah, He's just Dog... too far behind. He just doesn't have enough d total damage. Well, Dog's going to over-equip here, so that's 6 from the bow. He's got 5 from board. That's going to put Pavel down to 9, and actually Leroy off the top with the, with the Leoc buff would be exact lethal with the way Dog has played this, so... And and it's not like Pavel can really attack into the minions, or else he just gives them snakes. Mm -hmm. So, Dog has at the very least put himself on a draw to win with the way he played. Very other than chance, that, though. yeah. Other than that, I mean, Kill Command's not enough. Obviously, Pavel knows the card is just a five mana Leoc. He's gonna get some juggles here as well. So it looks like he's going to go ahead and attack into the snake trap, maybe. Nope. We'll see how, the, see how the juggles fall. Two went face, so he can actually just do eight damage to face, and then all he has to do is f find a way to piece one damage the next turn with bow and hero power. Well, now the interesting thing is your dead do uh, unleash the hounds. Oh, yeah. Due to the, oh, yeah. uh, the, the Leoc. Leoc. Yeah. But, but you have to set up lethal this turn, because if you trade and then Dog gets to trade, and then you don't have lethal, you, you lose. Uh, he's going to get four juggles from his Haunted Creeper dying. Yeah, so this is... That can actually pick off the snakes. So well, he's, actually... not, he's not going to die, almost surely. And... <laughs> it's all going face! <laughs> well, those are pretty insane. Oh, and he top-decked the Leroy! 
That oh, would have no! been didn't trade. And That's he, insane. He can't play that. So he needs a second explosive trap in his deck. And I don't think he has it. I mean, he'd clearly go for that if he if he had it. Yeah. Um. Wow. Those juggles are super relevant because if not, he could have uh, cleared off until Pavel had two damage. And no, yeah, no trap from the deck. That's gonna do it unless that unless we couldn't see the trap. Maybe there is a trap. And maybe we just couldn't see the trap. Oh, there is. There is a trap. We have the technology. And it's explosive. So dog win. <laughs> what? what? So we run three traps, double explosive and what? snake. Why was dog so stressed? He wins. I, I guess, I you know. really was that stressed. I guess in his mind he knew. Uh, wow. He knew a burden spell would still kill him. That's crazy. So wow. Uh, yeah, second explosive comes up huge. They never expect the third trap. They really don't. I mean, it's it's a pretty uncommon exclusion or inclusion, especially in the aggro hunter where traps are some of the weakest cards you can draw into if you don't cheat them out through Mad Scientist. Yeah. Uh, it's It was one of the first things I really did in optimizing my aggro hunter was, I mean, at one point I even went down to one trap, but... You know, mathematically, I think two is probably stronger, but three really increases your odds of just drawing into them naturally, which isn't something you want to happen. Yeah. So now that situation that we've talked about where Dog is up 2-0 in the series, um, he has three opportunities to find a win with Patron Warrior. Now, um, it could end up being pretty tough. There are... Midrange Hunter is okay. Handlock's actually a really rough matchup. Um, and then the last would be a mirror, so it'd basically just be a 50-50. I think this is probably his best opportunity to find a win, is this matchup. And Pavel seems like the sort of guy who throws out the toughest one first. Yeah, he did this last match. He just kind of thought, okay. And I mean, it's true. If you're going to win the match, you have to win with Hunter. So to save your time, to save everyone's time, I mean... It kind of feels, it looks worse if you get 3 0 so. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of players, just for, like, posterity's sake, they'll go for their strongest matchup first. In some, in, like, league formats, usually you go for your strongest matchups first for tiebreaker reasons, so. Pavel's got places to be. Yeah, Pavel's like, well, might as well end this quick one way or the other. If I win, sweet. Yeah. If I lose, all right. Let's go. He still doesn't have Golden Hunter on NA. He's got to start grinding the ladder. <laughs> he actually is a huge ladder player. I mean, he he's kind of known uh, in the European community for getting number one legend multiple times, uh, doing it with decks like Priest, even dating back to you know the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. So made a name for himself doing some unconventional things, getting good results. And now, just recently, I think, uh, at least this year, he's really come out with a lot of nice open tournament results. I think he qualified for like stuff like Gfinity. Obviously, he's pretty close to qualifying for this tournament at PAX. Yeah. Uh, this is this tournament's a pretty big deal by the way, you know, just we haven't really emphasized this enough. This isn't just another online tournament. This is a land qualification which could be pretty huge for some of these up and coming players. Yeah, I think it's uh there's a 200 and uh 50, well, it's 100 points, hard, uh, world championship points to the winner of the actual LAN. So at PAX. Yeah. Um, so if you make it there, uh, if you place highly, that's a lot of world championship points. That could jump you up from yeah. like nowhere to top five in the yep. standings. So I believe if you make it to PAX alone, you get 10 uh, automatically. 10, yeah. Yeah. 10, then and, 20, then 50, then 100. Yeah, even today or in there's world championship points or at least in the opens there was yeah in the, only in the opens there's world championship points yeah um so you he's he's probably gotten a couple of those from placing highly in the open so he could rack them up yeah lots of lots of stuff on the line and dog actually threw out an that was an error emote last turn he attacked straight into the snake trap after knowing it was a snake trap <laughs> Ouch. So the the shredder kind of coming into play again, where 
That was a lot of damage, man. Like, yeah. It takes a lot to get through. It's already yeah. put in six. The snake trap's going to put in at least three. But I think Pavel's going to realize he can't afford to tank a lot of damage through this uh, Frothing Berserker. Mm -hmm. At least he cashes in on one of the snakes before it's going to get yeah, but burnt. It looks like a, a coin whirlwind from Dog, so... It's it's the same old story we see with this matchup. The patron gets low, you know they lose half their health. They make some patrons. Everything's okay. They stabilize with armor. Yeah, and he does have armor smith to back it up as well, and warsong commander, so he can just have an endless slew of yeah. patrons. Yeah, I think he's gonna unleash and set up for the second unleash into kill command and hope that's enough to get it done next turn. But uh, with the armor smith, it probably isn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you should go for that hero power. Dog can also draw <laughs> almost his entire deck next turn. I feel like the kill command almost gives away too much, like, of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess there's not a great way to play around second unleash. Dog's just going to play down Armor Smith. He's going to battle rage for a billion, and he's going to armor up. And that's about all he can do here. Uh, yeah, he can battle rage for one extra card this way, so this is fine. I, so I still dead. Think I would have battle raged for for three, trying to draw into that second Armor Smith, and or a unstable ghoul. Yeah. Or a whirlwind even. So I feel like that might have been small it's not a mistake. He gets one extra card this way. It's just if it's an armor smith, it's not nearly as good. Yep, and there is the second armor smith, so little bit of punish, and is that gonna do it? I think it is. And dog kinda throws his hands up. That's ex no, because he doesn't have oh he yeah. wouldn't have had lethal, would he? No, yeah, he, he would have had exact, yeah. Yeah, 7 plus 2. So Dog could have played around that. Uh, it, he would have still died to the kill command, I think. But yeah. Could have gotten 2 extra armor uh, mm -hmm. if he had drawn first. So that's a big win for Pavel. I mean, he, he was down 0 too, but the 100 deck was the hardest one to get a win with. That's the, like, the only window of opportunity that you have is you have to kill him... Like you talked about, it's like you just make patrons, and then after that, you just stabilize and then push through for damage. You have that small window where they, they've just cleared your board and managed to stabilize but haven't gained the armor yet, where you sneak in that last bit of damage. And uh, yep. Pretty fortunate to have both unleashes, though, because that's the one way you're going to push through with damage. And there was just no way, because every, every point of armor he was gaining was also summoning an extra patron, so summoning an extra hound, so it was just negated the whole way through. Yeah, yeah I, Dog did maximize his chance to draw Unstable Ghoul, so that is definitely a consideration, mm -hmm. but which would have also locked out the game. Or Whirlwind. Yep, Whirlwind would have been quite nice. Uh, he had already used one Unstable Ghoul and one Whirlwind. Not sure how many of each he runs. But... And again, Pavel's going to go with the worst of the two matchups, the mirror match. So <laughs> he's he wants to end it if it's going to end. you know. Bold move, buddy. And these guys' decks probably differ slightly. Um, I think Pavel runs Grom, and I don't think Dog runs Grom. Um... Uh, maybe he does, because we've seen two Groms today. Yeah, we've seen more Groms than I would have expected. Yeah. Two more than I would have expected, actually. Mm-hmm. And we did see... I mean, all the patrons we've seen play today um, have played really aggressively. Mm -hmm. they've, they've thrown out the frothing whenever they could. They've gone for very aggressive weapon hits, very aggressive board control and patron plays, and... It's worked out pretty well. Uh, I think yeah. they've they've won almost every game we've seen. So I uh, can't can't fault them too much for how they played. It's yeah. definitely something that you kind of need to test 
to see if it's going to work out the highest percentage of the time. Good sequencing by Dog there to attack first before he attacked, traded in with the Armorsmith to make sure that he took yeah. a damage before he got the armor so he could yep. potentially make room for a bigger okay. battle rage later. Yep, you always want to get to 29 health. That's the key amount. The sweet spot. Yeah, and it looks like he really values this uh, Despite charge. Doesn't really want to waste it, so he's just going to pop the Inner Rage instead. Decides that's a less valuable card, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see Pavel just going off this turn. Uh, make four patrons and say, good luck. Yeah, there's really no way for him to deal with it, because Despite is really inefficient. He doesn't have executes, and Dog actually um, didn't have any cycle in his opening hand. So he does have Emperor, but it's not really going to be really impactful, and he doesn't want to leave these yeah. four patrons on the board uh, unanswered if he just plays <laughs> Emperor, but I don't know if he has much of a choice. Yeah, I don't think there's any really cool plays you can do with the triple whirlwind to fill your opponent's board. Uh, you could you could whirlwind four times. I'm not sure. I saw saw some Reddit post once about how many whirlwinds you needed to clear a board of patrons. <laughs> it's a lot. It, it's a lot. Yeah, you have to fill up their board and whirlwind like exactly enough. But yeah, I mean the emperor. I, I guess okay. Saving grace here for dog. He's setting up for a really sweet reverse kill. If he I can... I uh, don't think he's ever going to even get there. Well, he's a war song and a frothing off. That's that's what he needs. Yeah. He's got a battle rage draw once. Yeah, well, Pavel already has the war song and the frothing and the board. Yeah, but Doug has four whirlwinds. I guess you can't even use yeah. four whirlwinds. You can only use three. Yeah, that's game next turn for, for Pavel. Oh, uh, crushing my dreams, TJ. <laughs> There's no way he can draw into all the pieces of his It'd be sweet, next turn. though, wouldn't it? it? It would. Oh, oh, uh, that's still, like, not near enough. No, uh, he's still <laughs> dead by a lot. Oh, man. Actually, Frothing Berserker, there'd be seven creatures on the board, so Frothing Berserker would end up uh, he's being at nine, nine attack. Yeah. So it'd be nine Plus 12, 21, it's, plus 4, 25, 30. plus 5, 30 damage. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. 30. There's no way he lives. Oh, no. Okay, okay. I like this. He's setting up. He's saving himself. Now there's no room for the frothing. Got him. <laughs> he, can't, he can't even. Got him. <laughs> No, 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 no. He he will have room, but I don't think I don't know if he'll have enough damage after. Oh, dog didn't even draw into the combo field. I wanted this to be interesting, TJ. I wanted it to be like maybe, maybe um, there's a chance. You can uh, execute. No, 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 that doesn't do anything. Um, can't even if, if he could kill one of his own minions without killing that ghoul, he could easily have lethal. I think it's. Oh God. <laughs> I think he just trades in and proceeds as normal, because he'll take three. He'll take three. Yeah, that that's probably lethal, right? Okay, so he would have had thirty damage. So we have to subtract. He has fifteen, two. nineteen. He has, he has nineteen on board, and he's gonna whirlwind. Let's let's assume. Oh, he actually gets more patrons. Okay, well, this makes things even more awkward. So you have to kill one of. <laughs> this no, he, is so weird. He doesn't have enough, I think. He has 28 yeah. damage, and he's, Pavel's going to be at 29 now. health. I think yeah. he's one off. Yeah, he doesn't have enough. Oh, no, because no, he's a lot more than that, because his he he can play the Warsong Commander first, so the extra patient that he spawned doesn't have charge. So he's actually, like, six damage off. I got to move. <laughs> I, I think you're fine, Pavel. I'm yeah. sorry you didn't get the lethal this turn. But, yeah, I mean, the Armor Smith is basically a countermeasure against Frothing. Basically makes it so every time your opponent whirlwinds your board, the effect is nullified. Yeah. 
So we're going to have the, uh, the great counter-patroning of our time. Well... No, nah, the uh, the frothing has got to punish this, no matter what. Yeah. So th this is gonna be lethal from Pavel, mm -hmm. almost for sure. It was a great effort by Dog, though. It it actually was. I mean, he can clear, right? Yeah, he clears and makes a lot of patrons. That's six. So this was a great effort. Like, the way Dog played this, because cause you were thinking that one turn, he was just dead. <laughs> Dog just throws his hands up. He's like, he's I like, know I'm dead anyway. He's like, who knows? Maybe he doesn't have the War Song and I win. Yeah. Because actually, if there, if there was no War Song, this could just be a win for Dog. Yeah. But maybe if a Boom Bot miraculously spawns and uh, hits the frothing just like in every Trollden video. Yep. But, uh... And yeah, yeah dog, dog dog doesn't look happy. I mean, suddenly he's unfavored. That was a really great uh, reaction time by Dog, though, because once that death bite hits the face and the whirlwind starts and the frothy berserkers on the board, you can't concede. <laughs> like that, <laughs> that can see him down. Yeah. So he got it before. Uh, as soon as he saw the Warsong animation coming down, he he knew that it was uh, that it was concede time. So um, so we are going to move to a game five again. All three matches today have gone to a game number five, so I guess that shows how evenly matched these players are, but um, probably it's going to be a grueling day for these guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, very close matches, very close decks and how they line up. Uh, but, yeah, now, I mean, you have to kind of favor Pavel now. Uh, Hamlock has something like a 70% win rate against Patron overall. I mean, I'm not sure if it's going to be that much of a a disadvantage if you're playing it correctly so maybe dog has a higher chance to win this but yeah i bet dog's just wondering how it came to this <laughs> we had three opportunities to win with patron and now it's down to patron versus handlock this has happened to a lot of people i mean that's just kind of like a a thing from my anecdotal memory i don't really have statistics on this or anything but it seems like a lot of people's patrons have dropped games and whether that's the deck, whether it's how they're playing, the matchups they get, whatever. Patron yeah. has, for being called the number one deck by far for so many weeks, it has definitely not performed like that in tournaments. Uh, mm -hmm. It's nothing you know, to write home about. I mean, I would say the old Miracle Rogue definitely had stronger performances. But it's still definitely a strong deck. Almost every player bringing it, so. And there still are opportunities for you to find wins against Handlock. Um, mm -hmm. There are small windows where if the Warlock is in an awkward situation where he can't taunt up, um, like can't build a wall at a crucial time, like when a Despite's equipped, if you draw into like the Frothing and the Warsong, the Warlock does your work for you early on by getting them in range for you to kill them with with smaller combos, so. Yeah, mainly the issue here, especially with the hand Pavel has, is if you develop Mountain Giants early and your warrior opponent doesn't have executes to deal with it, you put them on such a clock that you remove their normal way of winning, which is a combo. Uh, the main way you beat Handlock is not, again, going back to the two win conditions of Patron, you've got Patrons or you've got Frothing combo. Mm -hmm. against, against a deck with Hellfire and Shadow Flame, you clearly can't go for Patrons. So you go for frothing. And yeah. when you're under so much pressure, you can't really effectively do the frothing combo. You can't build up the pieces fast enough. So Dog's going to need to draw into answers this game uh, pretty quick. Because right now his hand is just full of minions. Uh, another really key card, besides Warsong Commander, of course, is Emperor Thorison. But yeah. for, for now, I mean... Twilight Drake goes unanswered. She's going to keep hitting. And once these Mold Giants come down, if Dog doesn't find an answer by then, then uh, he's going to be on like a couple turn clock. Like, it's really rough if uh, you're having to use like your creatures. You're, like, if you have to use like Frothing Berserker to kill a giant to stay alive, those are the types of situations that if you find yourself in, the game is pretty much lost from that point if you're the warrior yeah. player. It uh, happens pretty quick when there's some 8-8s on the board. Mm -hmm. 
Now, he does have quite good opportunities to draw into stuff like Execute. He's going to have a lot of Psycho with Battle Rage, with the Acolyte. Um, so it's not completely out of the question that Dog could easily answer this board. But his hand at the moment won't do it. Now, from Pavel's point of view, he's pretty sure there's no Execute, but... Uh, Dog does get a lot of draws, so he's just staring at a blank a card at a blank hand of nine. So there could easily be executes in there from his point of view. Yeah. Emperor would have been really nuts this turn because it would give him double two mana frothing, zero mana whirlwind, the two inner ages, and he'd be on a worse long draw to basically win the game from that point on. Yeah, that's the only piece that it would be missing from there would be the War Song, and since he's reducing both of his Frothing Berserkers, he wouldn't even need to reduce the War Song. He could do that whole combo by like turn seven or eight. So, yep. Uh, it draws into second Armor Smith. That's not gonna really help him. And now he just looks like he's setting up for a big Battle Rage turn, but he hasn't taken any face damage. So, yeah, uh, only gonna be two cards from this. Yeah, he's actually gonna overdraw <laughs> once uh, from the Acolyte draw, and then his regular turn draw next turn. But overdraws aren't that relevant. Uh, if you think of it as the random card would just be the bottom card of your deck anyway. Uh, so yeah. it's essentially not relevant unless you get a fatigue. But the one extra factor being your opponent knows what you overdrew. So if you overdraw something like uh, like a Warsong Commander, your opponent is aware of that. And they know they don't have to play on Warsong Commander anymore. As hard yeah. anyway. Uh, we do see the Warsong Commander come into Dog's hand, and now there's actually no chance he draws into the... Oh! Yeah, and so that that's one of those overdraws that, despite overdrawing being an irrelevant concept, now you, we know for a fact one of those death bites is gone forever. Might as well be on the bottom of his deck. Uh, well, Dog's actually pretty close to being able to piece together a, little, a lot of damage, but not hitting the Emperor um, is going to make so that combo is not going to come until very late. Yeah, like you said, this is almost a, tur a two-turn clock at this point. These 8-8s eight are both going to hit face. Uh, he's probably going to heal or taunt or, you know, all of the above. <laughs> and that this is really pushing. And the main thing is, like you said, no Emperor means Pavel has nothing to be afraid of. Yep. He's just going to play Dr. Boom even. Turn eight. There's really not much you could do. Um, yeah, this is this is basically one turn too fast for dog to do anything about. Warson Commander frothing. Actually, um, that's nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. He can do sixteen damage this turn. Next turn, maybe. So I think you have to go with like execute, uh, play your emperor. Trade into bombs, gain that armor, and really hope you get there. I guess that's that's all you have, really. You can try to draw into that second execute, I suppose, but then you don't get the Emperor reduction, which is probably something you're going to need this game. Yeah. Uh, he has gone through both whirlwinds, so I guess the Emperor cost reduction is not as big of a deal. But, yeah, he's, he's one turn off being able to do the the Warsong patron frothing frothing after a Warsong. So he's going to go with that play. But the bomb goes face for three, and that's going to do it. Uh, that's going to be enough damage. Is it? Yep. Oh, yeah, because he won't be able to armor up after this. He's going to inner rage. Well, he's so going to gonna... inner rage for one extra. Yeah, that's... That's not enough, though. Hey, wow. he had He had to inner rage to not be dead to the board, but the Hellfire does it. Yeah. The armor from the armor smith factors in after the hellfire damage if it kills you. Yeah, Which if can, it kills you, there's no after. <laughs> he can't even, uh, he could have owled it, even if that yeah. wasn't the case. So, Wow. And Pavel is going to take it. And he wins both of his matches today. So he's going to move on to the semifinals and in the first seed from the group. So what that means is he's going to actually end up facing the second seed um from group b so i think it's it's it crosses like that in the semifinals on sunday so that could end up being a slight advantage um because he'll have more information on his opponent's decks because they'll have played three matches as opposed to two matches um so he's got to be feeling pretty good 
about yeah. his about his performance today. Yep, it's going really well for him. Uh, he actually came all the way from the Open tournament, uh, which, by the way, all you guys at home that are watching, you can go ahead and sign up for those Open tournaments. It's a complete summer circuit sponsored by Geico and brought to you by One Nation of Gamers. It's over at liquidheart.com. If you want to go there and sign up, there's a European and a North American Open, both this, this week. You can play in either of them if you've got the account to do so. So be sure to head over and check that stuff out. Yeah, we have eight more qualifiers left, four at NA and four at EU, I do believe. And each of those has World Championship points, a $250 prize pool, um, and, uh, again, uh, your Geico points. And if you win, you qualify for the feature tournament, which in turn can qualify you for the grand final at PAX. So um, there's actually a lot of players that play in those. And it's even if you think you're not that good but want to start participating in tournaments, it's actually a really good way to get tournament experience to improve your performance uh, for the future. So uh, make sure you head over there. Also head over to geico.onog.gg. That's the official website for the Summer Circuit. Uh, you can get information about the tournament and how the Geico points work. Uh, you can also get a quote from Geico. Um, they are the title sponsor, so if you guys want to uh, show them um, that their investment into esports is a good thing, then you can head over there and um, uh, sign up to win an official TSM PC and a Geico quote. Uh, but we are going to take a quick break. We're going to jump into the losers matchup next. That's going to be um, VX14 uh, versus uh, Tom60229, which will uh, happen next. The loser of that goes home. So don't go anywhere, guys. More Summer Circuit feature tournament number two action right after this.